Jack, you wanted to give the high level just kind of what happened and we can go from there? Yeah, so my senior year in high school, um, the last game of my senior year in high school, uh, I tore my ACL for the first time. And that was also two weeks before the McDonald's All-American game. Um, it's, a, it's a really prestigious uh, game for high school athletes, uh, basketball players. And um, so I wasn't able to participate in that game. Um, but I was committed to the University of Southern California uh, in Los Angeles. And during that span of six years, I, I tore my ACL four more times. Um, so I was only able to play 57 games in my college career. Um, but then in 2012, that's when I met Allison and my life kind of changed from that point on. I definitely can't take any credit, but in, can you give people context on like when you tear your ACL, how long, how long is the rehab and recovery? You know, what's that like? What's yeah, that so it's a, it's a pretty grueling process. It lasts eight to 12 months. Um, the rehab is really intense mentally and physically. Um, it's just a, it's one of probably the hardest, if not the hardest injury to come back from as any athlete. Um, so just kind of that one injury that you really want to stay away from because uh, it kind of changes everything from that point on. All right. Neil, does, well, Neil, are you going to chime in at all or do you want to? Yeah, to no, right. I wanted to ask, uh, Jackie, tell me, um, uh, what's an, you know, I, I don't know the ACL. Oh, is it? Sorry. We yeah. Should. Yeah, so the ACL, it's, it stands for the anterior cruciate ligament. It's the most important ligament in your knee. Without that, you can't really play. You can't function. So it's, um, yeah, it's it's a really important ligament that kind of makes everything work for you. But you couldn't, when you tear it, right, you can't walk, you can't move, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, ev yeah, everyone kind of, um, you know, everyone's different, but it's definitely – it's it's hard it's hard to to play on so so basically on your last game essentially in your high school career and here you are number one in the world in terms of uh, of um, prospects and uh, you'd already signed with uh, SC or UConn at the time um, when I was 15 I was committed to UConn but um, fast forward to my senior year I had changed my mind and I was uh, at USC got it and so you, so you were that good that you could be uh, be one of Gino's girls, so to speak. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and say and then, no. That's, sorry? That's, and not only like did Gino want Jackie, but Jackie was good enough that she could say thanks, but no, no thanks, basically. <laughs> right. So exactly, exactly. And, and just to give context, Gino's UConn team uh, is arguably one of the one, two, teams in the world for college basketball, women's college basketball? Right. For the last like 20 years, they've yeah. won a championship. Yeah, won yeah. amazing. Basically. Okay, but here's the thing. You're that good, you're doing it, you're swinging away, you're doing, you're hitting all the highs. And then one day, boom, that's right. not happening anymore. That's tough to deal with. So Jackie, let's talk about that. Because we as real estate agents, you know, we run into that. We could have two or three of those, not those. We could have two or three things happen that are negative in any given day. What, what you came back from is, is game changing, it's life changing, uh, so to speak. Right. So, but it's not just that one, Neil. Like she, every time that Jackie came back, she hit it again and went right back down. You know, like that's, I mean, that's part of what makes her story so incredible is just because she's so resilient that she i mean i guess to give people context for for today jackie well we're kind of skipping over the order of the questions but but jackie has has made a wmba team she's played an entire season in the w, you know like we're t i guess we're taking some of the expense it's a suspense away um but she's currently signed with the connecticut son of the wmba you know so so fast forward uh, knock on wood jackie's had what, right. Six straight she came, she's come health. through it and it's been yeah. steps along the way. What I kind of wanted to get to a little bit, Jackie, right now was, okay, so what did you, it clearly had to knock you back and set you back. What, what do you do mentally to come back from that? I mean, and, and not only did you come back from it once, you came back, it was four tears, four different tears. Um, and it, yeah, it was a five in total. 
Um, I think for me, the, the biggest thing coming back from each of those injuries um, was my childhood. I had such an amazing childhood. Um, my parents devoted so much time, money and energy into my career as a young, young player. Um, the countless hours that my dad put in the gym with me to help make me the best basketball player that I could be. These are all things that kind of tied in and played a huge part um, as to why I wanted to keep trying and, and keep trying to make it happen. Um, you know, my dad, uh, he's worked the gra graveyard shift at a grocery store his whole life. So, um, you know, seeing him so tired all the time, but still devoting all that time into me to try and make me a great player, um, it just stuck with me. And um, my mom also battled with breast cancer. So I had to see her go through that. And that was really hard for me. Um, but, you know, I, I come from a family of fighters. Um, my dad also is a, is a prostate cancer survivor. So I think that they kind of paved the way and led the way for me um, and just kind of instilled that work ethic in me and that fighter's mentality to overcome um, adversity and to just kind of see my, my dreams, make my dreams a reality. Um, and there was nothing in the world that no one was going to say or do to stop me from wanting to make that WNBA roster, um, no matter how many uh, physical therapists or doctors were telling me that I shouldn't play anymore and that my body just wasn't fit for basketball. Um, you know, I still had some stubbornness inside me that just wanted to prove everyone wrong um, and just, just take it and go for it. So that's, that's just kind of carried me my whole life, just my passion for basketball and the love of the game. We get that, absolutely. I mean, it, it, that comes through loud and clear, certainly. And, and I've had an opportunity to, to spend time with you uh, and get to know you as, as an individual. My question here, though, is, is w w I get the family, I get the support, and a lot of us have nice families and good support, et cetera, et cetera. But where does that come from? Where do you get it from inside of you that gets you up the next day that gets you to the gym that you know i i know your trainer i know he the guy uh, here in beverly hills that that has helped you move that along those are not easy workouts that you do with them to get better to to be able to uh, you're playing now at the at, at the wmb level it doesn't get any higher than that in the, in the world for uh, for women's basketball yeah i mean you know you're really making me dive deep into this question um i i think how i've always answered how i've always seen it um is just you know the passion for the game and the love for the game it's i don't see myself doing doing something else right now that's going to fulfill me in that way um i had a plan and a goal in mind when i was young uh, and, you know, I, I just think my competitiveness and my, my drive for wanting to do what I want to do, not what anybody else wants me to do, is just, yeah, I think that that is what really carried me. Um, and, and maybe I'm crazy or maybe I'm just different than other people that would have been in my position. But um, for me, it's this is what this is what makes me go and this is what fulfills me. Um, and, and I try my best not to compare myself to other people and wish that I was in different positions or, you know, what if scenarios, but um, this was, these were the cards that I was dealt with. And I think that some, you know, there's a reason that I had to go through this. I think that I was able to handle it and kind of pave the way and be an example for other athletes um, that are going through this injury and just, you know, help people emotionally or however I can mentally to be that example for other athletes around the world that are going through something like this. But don't get it twisted. Like you had your lows. I mean, you've gone through it. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it was, it's been a tough road. I, there were times I wanted to quit um, times where I questioned what I was doing, if this was worth it. Um, but then that also plays, you know, people like Allison and people like Fabrice and my parents. And um, you know, these are the reasons why I was able to come out of that because uh, I had that incredible support around me and, and great people around me to help me keep going. Um, one of the, uh, that's great information there really is. I mean, one of the, one of the people on the, on the chat asked, what do you say to yourself to keep going? You know, in, in those moments that you're low and, and you're, 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 it's just, not, it's like, why do I have to keep doing this anymore? What do you, what do you say to yourself, Jackie? 
Um, it, it's, I don't think it's um, something that I say, but it's more so what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking of um, two people in my life, my mom and dad, that I feel have been through a lot in their lives, just, you know, going through the cancer and seeing them go through those downfalls. Um, just having these visions of these two people in my mind really carry me um, and, and just kind of put things into perspective for me. I'm, I'm going through a ACL injury. You know, I'm not losing, I'm not, my life is not in question or um, something more detrimental, you know, didn't happen. This is just a ligament, a ligament in my knee that's, uh, you know, not letting me play basketball. So I put kind of things in that perspective and just tell myself how much worse it could be. Um, and, and I think of my parents, you know, my, my two biggest supporters and my, my two biggest fans. Uh, and this is what really just drives me. Oh, that's so you great. Perspective, basically. What so you say, Allison, Alex? say that again. No, she, uh, Jackie, but like not to speak for you, but basically you put things in perspective and you always go back to what your parents went through. Right. Just overcoming cancer, basically. And that, you know, you have to overcome a knee injury and, and you're going to be, you're going to be all right. But right. I think it's all perspective and mentality and Jackie has a really good mindset it's a her mind can be a scary place sometimes and she's an overthinker and and has her dark days sure but like right. I, I mean I have a, a good amount of clients that that are really hard workers and I have some clients that aren't hard workers and Jackie's in the category of of someone who's always gonna put always gonna put the work in no matter what I mean right now is a good example um the WNBA season is more or less in jeopardy. No one knows what's going to happen, if there's going to be a season, when there's going to be a season. Jackie was supposed to be in training camp in Connecticut starting uh, April 26th, and Jackie's very diligent with her repertoire. She was actually in Greece when uh, this pandemic uh, broke out and is now home in the Bay Area, but there, there's no certainty over, over you know, her career and when it's going to resume, and, and she's so stubborn with her work ethic that nothing's going to stop her from getting her workouts in to the point where her coach in Connecticut actually reached out to her and said, Hey, like people have been reaching out to me saying that you're not staying in your house and staying quarantined because you're getting your workouts in. But that, that just goes back to Jackie's overall mindset and mentality and, and work ethic. Like nothing will stand in her way. Right. Right. So, um, we missed, we missed a segment in the middle that we got that the that she got hurt and then we got that she got to the WNBA, WNBA. but there's a there's a whole story in between it's a lot of ups and downs i mean you got healthy and then went and tried out for something and then tore it again i mean you want to kind of walk us through that story a little bit jackie please yeah i think to kind of make a a long drawn out story in a shorter way. Um, so the first time I tore my ACL, like I said, was the last game of my senior year in high school. Um, so that forced me to redshirt my first year at USC. Um, so I didn't play that first full year. The next year, which would have been my sophomore year, um, in October, I went down again. So I had finally got cleared. I played for one month. Uh, went down again and went down in October and then had to sit out that whole season. And then my junior year, which would have been my junior year, same thing happened except in September. So I was always cleared for one or two months tops and then I would go back down. Um, and, and the worst one that happened was uh, when I had a, a certain surgery, it's called um, an allograft surgery where I take, they take someone else's body part and use that as my ACL. So a very small percentage of people, when they get this procedure done, uh, their body rejects it. And my body rejected it, so the ligament actually dissolved in my knee. Uh, so it was just like a freak thing. And I, they ended up having to redo the entire surgery over after eight months into that rehab. So that was really devastating for me. That was the fourth surgery. Uh, and then finally, I was able to play one full season healthy and then that next summer, I made the USA Olympic team in 2011 um, the, for the World University Games team, which was a miracle kind of because I had only played one season in the last five years at that point. Um, and I was playing with some of the best players in the world on that team. Uh, so I had one full season under my belt going into my senior year in December. That's when I tore my ACL for the fifth time. Um, wow. So I was out. I was out the rest of that season. 
Uh, and you were trending towards being a first round draft pick, like having an amazing season her senior year. And then one of the biggest games in the whole season, like 17,000 people in the crowd. This was in a game in Texas. Right. And, and we still like, the, the clip is still out there. Like when she went down, the whole arena went silent. Cause everybody, I mean, Jack, like I'm biased cause I'm Jackie's agent and we're also best friends, but Jackie, like everybody knows who Jackie is in the world of women's basketball and everybody knows her story. So the moment that happened, like, People didn't know if Jackie was ever, you know, if Jackie, if you were ever going to play again. I mean, you yeah. got drafted. Well, I'm, sorry, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, ahead. no, I mean, well, like, that's exactly what happened. Um, I think after that last tear is when I really put in question what I was doing. Um, and at that point, people just thought it was kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, then at the end of the season in March, when the WNBA draft happened, I got drafted to the Minnesota Lynx in the third round, the 31st overall pick. Um, and that to me was just, that's all I needed was something to hold on to, some sort of hope and something to work toward. Um, so, you know, they weren't going to be able to take me that summer, but they were going to retain my rights to the following summer. So that gave me a whole year, a long time to be able to work with Fabrice and be near Allison and get my mind right, my body right, and do all the right things in order you know, to try and make that WNBA team. So that was everything that I needed in order to keep going. Just, I got to hold on to something. So that was really, really important for me. And you had something to look forward to and to, to work right toward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So you kept practicing and you practiced locally, but you went overseas and played professional ball overseas. Um, you know, talk about that a little bit. I mean, well, how did that, how's that mess inter- with you? Can I interject first? Sure. Like, Jackie worked her butt off going into from 2012 to 2013 when we first, when we first met and she was getting ready to go to Minnesota training camp in April of 2013. And that was, you know, that was everything Jackie's been working for her whole life, just for this one, you know, one moment, a couple, really like one day to prove herself because players get cut players, um, teams cut players every day, basically, in WNBA training camp. And so Jackie went out to, to Minnesota, was, you know, ready to go, and, and ended up uh, getting cut off of that team, which Jackie can, can speak to herself. But, you know, all of this preparation and work that she had put into in this, you know, this goal, right, of, like, making a WNBA team, and then, and then again kind of has to, to rejigger her routine and, and build into playing overseas because that in the, in the women's basketball pro, or professional women's basketball calendar, if you don't make a WNBA team or you do make an NBA team, most players go overseas to supplement um, and really make the bulk of their income. So now Jackie just had another, um, another thing to overcome and then had to wrap her head around working with me to get her placed in Europe, which Jackie, you had been to Europe like maybe once in your life at that point. No, I actually that would have that was my first time. Oh, even better. Yeah. Where'd you sign, Jack? Your first season overseas. Uh, so my my first season overseas was in Athens, Greece. Um, my dad is Greek, so I'm half Greek. Um, and me and Allison were able to get my Greek citizenship. Um, so I was actually playing in Greece as a local. I considered I was considered a Greek player there and it's and that's really valuable because I am American and you're only allowed two Americans per team overseas. Um, so this was a really big deal and not only for me, but it was a huge deal for my dad and my family as well because my dad also played professionally in Greece. Um, and ironically, the first team that we played against was my dad's old club. Uh, so that was just a monumental time in my career to be able to play against my dad's old club and that'd be my first professional game overseas. Um, So it it was an incredible season and an incredible experience really um, just kind of made my, my European experience uh, something to look forward to from that point on. And the basketball was great. The level was great. It was different. The game is a lot different there. They play more with their head and use their mind a lot more versus the WNBA. It's more based off athleticism and strength and quickness and talent. Uh, But there they don't have those things. They lack those things there. So they play a lot more with their head. So being able to play in both places, I was able to incorporate both those styles into my game 
Uh, and that really blossomed me as a player, and it's helped me a lot. And I think that bringing that European side to the WNBA is going to be an advantage that I'll have going into this training camp. Was there, was there anything that you took out of your first training camp experience that you tried to implement and get better at overseas? Yeah, I mean, my first training camp experience, just being told that I wasn't good enough and being cut was something that stuck with me for the rest of my career, just that feeling and um, not wanting to, to to have someone tell me again that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't good enough. Because um, at I, that moment... Can I stop ahead, you for know? just a second on that thought, Jackie? Yeah. I'm sorry. But that, no, okay. that, that's the point, okay? We all get rejection in this business, okay? Mm -hmm. We're constantly rejected. And and n not at the levels that you're getting rejected, okay? We get rejection like somebody doesn't want to list their house with us, okay? Well, that's they, a big deal. Well, but... But it's not public. Your rejections are all over the internet. Yeah, okay. yours is... The, everything you get rejected on is public, big time. <laughs> so, so, so my question... So how do you... What do you do? It's it's the next morning. You've got to get out of bed. You've got to practice. You, you've got to get your head on straight. You've got to get into your routine. Um, uh, at, at, toward the end, we have a number of questions here, but a couple of them are, you know, what do you do every day? What is your routine? What is your mantra? But we'll get into that in a minute. But where are you in that moment? Because if I could get that from you, I think that could help some of our people to get out of bed the next day when they're, look, it, this, this is a tough business. Is this a tough business in general? Then it's really tough right now. But, you know, yeah. you have some experience in tough. I mean, I, I, I think that we all face our adversities. We all go through our hardships. Um, everyone's is different. Um, but adversity is adversity. And um, the things that happened to me throughout my career and, um, not making those rosters and being cut, um, those things propelled me. And it was because I, I hated it so bad. I was such a competitor. I am such a competitor that being told, you know, that I'm just not good enough or I'm not fit for that team, it doesn't sit well with me. So those things are what makes me, what drives me. And I think what makes me, um, the person that I am and, and, um, you know, I just, I just think I'm an over competitor and, um, you know, having to work towards something and, and have something that's hard in front of me is something that I like and something that I feed off of. Um, I don't like to feel sorry for myself. I think I'll give myself maybe 24 hours to feel sorry for myself. Um, but you know, like I said, there's way bigger problems in the world and my job is to play basketball. Your guys' job is to sell houses. And, uh, you know, that's what we're, we're here for. And I think that you're allowed to give yourself that grace period of, of feeling bad and sad for 24 hours. And then it's go time again. And you get back up and you do it all over again. And you, and you do it harder. You do it better. You fix your mistakes. Um, you know, you do, you do things differently. You can't, can't keep doing the same things over and over again because you're going to keep getting the same results. And uh, for you, Jack, too, like, you're not planning for tomorrow when you get back up, right? Like, you're really planning to go overseas. I mean, you have an interesting job because you have to stay ready every day. Right. The WNBA team could call her at any time during season, but at the same time, she might not go actually play until September when she goes overseas. So let's say from April or May when Jackie got waved out of Minnesota, you know, she's not – I mean, she's getting ready really for September, so it's not about, you know, it's, it's each day preparing as if, as if tomorrow she's going to play, but, you know, she's really preparing for three, four months from then, mm -hmm. which I think is, is apropos to today, right? Because if, if you don't move today, then not only are you screwed for this week and next week and next month, but really for, for the foreseeable future down the line. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. So um... do you want me to keep moving through her story? Or we could keep yeah, going. no, 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 for sure. Because we're at, I think we're 2014 right now. Okay, keep going. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you had a great season in Greece, right? Yeah. Um, where, great, and where great, did we go next in 2014? So great season in Greece. Um, and then we got a call from Michael Cooper, uh, who was my former college coach at USC. 
Um, I thought I had a really good chance and opportunity to make that WNBA roster in Atlanta. Um, and I didn't make the team. He cut me three days into camp. I was the first one to get cut. Um, and that was one of the lowest points in my career, just because I really felt I was going to make that team. Um, and I felt like I was ready. I had already been cut from Minnesota. I just came back from my first full season overseas. That was hard to hear. Um, and, and, and then Allison comes to me after I get cut and tells me that I have an offer in Italy to play. So I think if it wasn't for her and my parents, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have wanted to take that offer. I was so kind of, you know, distraught at that point. And I didn't have, you know, much to, to hold on to. I didn't have anything to look forward to. I was really down. Um, and, and Allison and my parents, thanks to them, you know, they kind of, forced me to take that deal in Italy and it ended up being the best decision that I could have made. Um, so I went to Italy. I had a great season there. Um, I a really, really good season there. Allison got me another opportunity the following summer in 2015 with the Chicago sky. Wait a sec. If you wouldn't have taken that opportunity in Italy, you may have never made a WNBA. You would have been done. You would have, your career would have been over and you were this close. Like you were miserable, yeah. but, but also part of your misery was that, the expectation that was coming from uh, the coach in Atlanta was that Jackie had made the team. Like it was like almost a done deal at that point. And then she walks in ready to go, putting her everything into it. And is the first in the first group to get, to get cut out of nowhere with no explanation, no, no nothing. So to go, you were low. Like, yeah. But then you decide to get up and go to this opportunity in Italy and arguably had your, you know, one of your best seasons, well, your best season to date, for sure, at that yeah. point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, and then uh, Pokey Chapman from Chicago gave me an opportunity in the WNBA again, which was really crazy because after being cut twice before that and um, all the injuries I've had that everybody knew about, for, for me to get another opportunity like that and another chance in the WNBA, I think was huge looking back on it now. Um, I don't think very many people would have gotten that chance. No, um, but Oki used to coach in, this is part of where like, you never know where life's going to take you and where people have seen you. When Jackie was at, you know, arguably her peak on the court in high school, Pokey was the head coach um, at Louisiana State University and right. tried to recruit Jackie to her school at that point. So fast forward, you know, eight years, however many years it was, she had always kind of kept an eye on, on Jackie and kind of followed her. And then I started kind of being her and sending her Jackie's game film and stuff. Jackie was playing amazing in, in, in Italy. And so she decided to offer Jackie a spot in training camp, which comes with no securities, no compensation, no nothing. Like she, they agreed to put, to put players up in a, in a hotel room. Sometimes the hotel room is shared with another player. You typically have to share a car with another player and you pretty much just go back and forth to one or two practices a day. Like it's not a glamorous experience. Yeah, not at all. And, and what happened during training camp, Jack? Um, yeah, well, I went into that camp and I, I really felt confident and I felt like it was the first time a coach uh, believed in me and wanted me a part of that team. Um, so I think that that really helped me and gave me a lot of confidence uh, knowing that I belong there and I belonged in that league again. Um, and Pokey gave me my first um, WA job and that was when I act finally achieved my dream was in 2015. I was 26 years old. Um, so that you was that job though. It wasn't given to you. You had to beat, you had to beat out a player that had been on the team the previous year, which is not an easy. Yeah. And the training camp Jackie walked into happened to have a good friend of hers who growing up, Jackie was older than, but she, this woman, Elena Dell, one of the best players in the WNBA and like in high school looked up to Jackie. Jackie was the player that she looked up to and wanted to play with. And so coming full circle, fast forward a lot of years, and Jackie's trying to make the team that she was then the star of. But I think Jack, like that probably gave you some kind of like confidence that like Elena looked at you like, you know, like you could hoop, basically. Right, absolutely. I mean, she was the best player in the world and we had a lot of history. Um, and, and she kind of, I mean, she knew who I was pre-injury. So it was, it was comforting going into that camp and having her there. 
So good stuff, good stuff. Let's go to a couple questions here, Jackie. Um, Joe asked the question, how did you stay on top of your game and on top of your studies? Um, that was a challenge. Um, you know, at USC academically, it's, it's pretty hard, um, but we had a lot of help there, a lot of tutors, a lot of study, study hall hours. Um, I mean, it was almost impossible to, to not succeed there academically with all the help that they provided us with. Um, but I mean, we, time management was huge in college, um, you know, having to understand the importance of that and learning how to manage our days. Um, it kind of helped me in my everyday life from that point forward, just time management and, and really organizing myself and my days and dedicating a certain amount of hours toward my sport, a certain amount of hours, hours toward my academics, toward my social life, towards sleep. Um, you know, and, and back then in your college days, I felt like I had so much more energy than I did now. <laughs> um, but I was really, you know, we had coaches that cared so much about us and, and was, they weren't going to let us slip. Uh, so every day was a grind, but every day was, was manageable. What are your days like now? Um, I mean, now without any school, it's, I just dedicate my days toward working out, taking care of my body, um, uh, working on my clothing line that I have. And yeah. So how do you, so one of the questions was, you know, how do you manage that? You know, your clothing line, your personal life, you got all kinds of cool things going on, you know, and, and your WNBA career. I mean, how's that um, well, I mean, right now it's a good time to manage these things just because <laughs> there is a lot more time in the day. Um, but when I'm overseas and I'm playing in a season and we're playing two games a week, we're traveling a lot. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of my days are dedicated toward sleep and, and eating and, and rest and practices and shooting and, uh, recovery. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of hours that go into, uh, the preparation of the, of the sport. Um, but on my, on my time that my downtime and the extra time that I do have, I'm able to do things for myself and things that make me happy. Um, but definitely, obviously my priority is, is my basketball. So I probably dedicate around six, four to six hours, maybe sometimes eight hours a day with weightlifting, with practice, with therapies, with everything else, video. There's a lot of time that goes into it. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. You talked about how important your folks are in your life and the, how they inspire you. Is there any other role models that you have, maybe in sports or maybe from high school or college? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but my favorite player, my role model has always been Diana Taurasi. Um, no one here probably knows who that is, um, but she's just, you know, what. Yeah, I know Neil and Allison do. <laughs> Maybe Bob Hertel does. He kind of, he's smiling right now. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, she's, she's the goat of women's basketball for me, and I always looked up to her. I think that her attitude and her demeanor toward uh, basketball and her killer mindset and attitude has just always inspired me, and I've always wanted to be like her and play like her. So that's another one of my role models. That's great. That's great. Uh, anyone have any, can we open it up a little bit for questions? Was there, uh, can we do that for? Great. What's, what's, Jack, Go what's ahead. Your, why did you start a clothing line and what is it called? Um, so my brand overcome, um, I, I really just wanted to help inspire others to overcome things in their lives. Um, and I thought merchandise would be the best way because of my schedule. Um, and because I traveling all over the world, uh, so creating t-shirts and other merchandise, uh, I would be able to have the most impact um, on people and sharing inspirational messages through my line, things Are you like wearing that. wearing it now? Uh, yeah, I'm wearing one of them now, but it has no relevance really, so it's okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Very good. Very cool. Uh, any questions? Questions, you guys? You covered a lot of territory, Jackie. Thank you. Of course, Neil. Anything for you. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have a quick question I want to ask you. All right, let's yeah, do it. Very nice to meet you. Um, nice. I watched a lot of basketball, and I heard your experience. It's a little bit similar to Derrick Rose. Would you 
a, a little bit. You see a little bit of similarity in there. Yeah. And I was, you know, there's a lot of difficult time, but in the downtime, how, what is your schedule look like and how would you manage you know, all these things and, and how do you keep on going, even, you know, things are a little bit negative and like, how do you, yeah, like that's, that's kind of the question. You're saying like in this, in this time that we're in right now? No, like, like, um, during the in injury. Oh, okay. Um, well, for me, it's um, you know, I, having something to work toward. Um, I mean, physical therapy is very repetitive, especially when you do it um, five years in a row. Mm -hmm. It kind of, you, you kind of feel like you're doing the same thing and it kind of gets boring. Uh, but that's why for me, it was so important um, to actually learn why I was hurting myself and understand why I was doing the same thing over and over again. So uh, with my trainer, I, we were able to really dissect the reasons why I kept re-injuring myself. And that's the kind of therapy that we were doing uh, was to be able to prevent that from happening again. So I think just, um, you know, trying to um, just do different things and, and make yourself work for something different. And it, it was really helpful for me, especially when I had a different trainer in the last uh, year I hurt myself um, that kind of kept me going but um, just just waking up every day physical shape that I could be mental shape that I could be taking care of my body nutrition is huge and just feeling good about myself and what I was doing every day um, knowing that I, I was trying to work for something thank you I hope that answered your question I don't yeah, know if I did or not <laughs> very cool other other questions so 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 Jackie, I have a question. I want to go back to high school when you're you're the number one player. You obviously have your school, but how many hours a day are you focused on basketball, either practicing, watching film, working out, so and so forth? I mean, what what was that like? So in high school, I think that I just had a different mindset and I um my dad always instilled in my head at a very young age that um, if, so, if I wasn't working one day that somebody else was going to be working outworking me. Um, uh, and he always did this thing with his hands. He would say, okay, Jack, you're here. And the, the other girls are here. And if you don't practice today, the girls are going to be here. And I always remembered his hands doing this movement. Um, uh, and that kind of stuck in my head because I, I knew that if I wasn't going to practice that day, somebody else that was close to me was going to, passed me up and I was scared for that. It really made me scared. And I, I couldn't sleep or I couldn't do anything if I didn't practice. So I was constantly in the gym. I was shooting 500 shots a day. Um, I would shoot, I would make myself make, uh, you know, shots with my left hand before leaving. Things that were just out of character that most kids or girls probably uh, weren't doing. Um, and I just kind of, I, I always had this feeling of I was never going to let other people outwork me. And, that, and I can credit my dad for that because he instilled this unbelievable work ethic in me as a young player. Um, so even after games, my senior year in, in high school, I was averaging 40 points a game, which was the highest point in my career. Um, after games. Four points out of how many total in a game, Jack? Like we're talking 60, 70 points in a game, maybe 80. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was probably scoring 50% of our, of more than 50% of our um, scoring. But um, that's like not normal just for context, like contextual purposes. Like I played in college, I was nowhere near Jackie's level. I averaged probably like 17 points per game, which was like pretty good. And I was good. the biggest score on my team. But like Jackie averaged 40. That's not normal. Um, but, you know, after games, when I would have these great games, uh, I would go in the gym at, at one of our local gyms here and I would just shoot, I would shoot, I would shoot and until midnight. Uh, and then after shooting, I would go and lift. And this, these were after, you know, I would just have 45 point games. Um, but it was just, I, I wanted to outwork other players. I wanted to be the best. And I knew in order to be the best that I had to be a little crazy and, and just, um, you know, completely take my game to another level and my practice to another level and never let anybody outwork me. So that's what I was doing in high school. After my games, we would come here and have Shabbat. Hey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
This is this has been great, Jackie. Thank you, Allison and Jackie, putting this together and, and helping us. This has just been fantastic.